Asian stock markets fall while European shares rise. Japan vows $60 billion to boost the IMF, while Spanish yields jump after auction. Traders await earnings from a slew of U.S. companies, including IBM, Coca-Cola, Goldman Sachs, Intel, Johnson & Johnson, and Yahoo. I'm Brittany Umar, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer here at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you the Morning Call Express. So we did get some mixed signals yesterday. We saw selling continue in high beta momentum stocks. It now held its games, uh, gains. Tech stocks, of course, were the weakest. Financials rallied. I guess the question first, Evan, is how are you setting up for today? Well, I think that's an interesting question because yesterday, I have to tell you, it was one of the strangest days that I've seen in a long time. It was one of the most divergent days that I can recall in a while. You had a, uh, uh, you know, you had your high flyers, your Apple, your Google, some of the leadership stocks that have taken us higher, really taken on the chin again yesterday. While the market sat there, you know, in a lofty up, uh, it was, I think it, at one point it was up about 120 the Dow, and the sp and the S and P's held in for the better part of the day until the very end. So it really was a divergent because you had things that were holding in and hanging tough, and you had things that were really you know, sort of taking it on the chin and selling in mass. So very, very interesting composure yesterday in the market, and I think we need to look at some of it. We'll take a look here at the S&Ps uh, just to get an idea of what we think is going to happen today and why. We talked yesterday in the recap and also in the morning call about the fact that our key moving averages here had, had turned down. We saw a two-day bounce late last week into those averages, selling on Friday. And again, what we call a little bit of a pause yesterday. Really not much movement. We saw uh, a little bit of a push-up, but late into the day, we saw some sellers take control and you know push the markets back to the lower end of the range. I suspect we are going to take out uh, this prior pivot low down here, which is just under 1360 uh, in the S&Ps. I think it was about 1357. Uh, our next level of support below that is around 1340, and that goes back to uh, the March lows and the February uh, lows. We see a nice area of, of strong support here. So I suspect that we're going to see another push lower uh, in the day, in the next couple of days, possibly even undercutting that 1340 before any real uh, snapback takes place. That's how I'm looking at it. That's how I think our traders are going to trade this. That's what it seems to be doing. All right. Well, one of the big headlines today already, of course, is Goldman Sachs earnings out before the bell. Looks like they reported Q1 earnings per share of $392, $9.9 billion in revenue. Maybe we should take a look at the chart and just see how it's shaping up for today. Absolutely. Goldman's, uh, you know, a very widely watched, heavily institutionally owned symbol. Uh, we look at the weekly here just to get a macro picture. Goldman is uh, a, bit, a bit worrisome, and we talked about this earlier. Um, as the market has rallied over the last, you know, six months, especially the last six months, you can see a chart that's not really healthy. You have consistent lower highs over the last two years. Uh, so this stock is telling us a story of weakness, and, and every bounce short term that it has has been sold for new lows. Uh, with earnings this morning, we're going to take a look at that right now. We're going to look pre-market. Again, this is uh, just a few minutes after earnings, and we can see here the stock trading real time about 115 and a half off of the 119 area for 118, 119 area from yesterday's close. So the stock getting sold post earnings here. Again, another example of uh, earnings where you know earnings are good. Street seems to like the numbers, but the market really doesn't, and selling is taking place. At least that's what's happening right now. So something to keep a very watchful eye on, as that could take financials down, and that could bring the overall market down. Okay, and of course, another stock that's always in the headlines is Apple. We're coming back from that little <laughs> chart preview right there. Uh, Apple taking a big haircut yesterday. It seems as though the stock may be getting down to levels where buyers could step in, but should they? They should not. Uh, I think that the smart trader, again, smart money doesn't step in front of a bus, uh, whether the bus is running straight up or the bus is running straight down. It is a recipe for disaster. So what's happening here in Apple is that you see momentum picking up. We saw a nice two-day break. Now, this is the type of trade that a lot of traders have been stepping into. Every, every pullback in Apple over the last six months, even the last two years for that, for that matter, you know, has been bought. I don't see this one snapping back. The volume is increasing as the sell-off is uh, is moving down. There is room to go lower. I think a nimble trader, if we can see down into the mid to low 560s, would look for an actionable buy setup. But until that happens, I think it's best to uh, you know avoid. I think we could see lower this morning. All right. Well, we're going to dive into all this and more in the long version, so stay with us.
Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.